Hi, thank you, Beth and Antoinette, for inviting me, and um, I'm happy to be here today to talk about lifestyle approach to reducing your cardiovascular risk. And I'd like to start by talking about a patient that you are all familiar with. It's someone who doesn't want to take pills. So a 52-year-old woman who is a medical editor comes to my office with a new uh, diagnosis of hypertension. She was sent from the gynecologist with a blood pressure of 150 over 85. She's complaining of some hot flashes, insomnia, and weight gain. Her last menstrual period was one year ago, and she states that she's always had normal blood pressure, and she does not want to take pills. Um, when I look at her, I say, okay, that she's had some weight gain. Her mother died from a heart attack at age 52, which is her biggest cardiovascular risk right now. Her blood pressure is equal. Her eyes are intact. Her BMI is a little high at 28. Her waist is 38, which makes her probably on the, on the range of a metabolic syndrome type patient. Her cardiac exam is normal. She has no bruise in her neck or her abdomen. Um, and her labs look pretty unremarkable, except her total cholesterol is elevated at 240, and her HDL is a little bit low at 40. So she wants to know, is there any real evidence that lifestyle changes can reduce my cardiovascular risk? So what I told her is that there are a group of 14 um, individuals, a big consensus expert panel that convened and looked at over 8,000 articles. They screened 8,000 studies to evaluate a total of 100 studies to answer that question. Um, and what they did is they had three critical questions. The first one was, among adults, what is the effect of dietary patterns on cardiovascular disease risk factors when compared to no treatment? Among adults, number two is what is the effect of dietary dietary intake of sodium and potassium on cardiovascular disease risk factors and outcomes. And finally, among adults, what is the effect of physical activity on blood pressure and lipids when compared to no treatment? So when they looked at all these articles, they excluded many of them for not being properly conducted or having in, you know, not sufficient a number of patients in the trials. Um, and they made sure that they had patients with real hard outcomes. And the first thing they looked at was dietary patterns. So we looked at Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, and high versus low glycemic diets, looking at effects on blood pressure and lipids. The Mediterranean style diet, um, they looked at three randomized controlled trials. Um, and what they saw is that there was no uniform definition of this diet, unfortunately, but most commonly, the uh, features included high in fruits and vegetables, high in whole grains, high in fatty fish, low in red meat, um, and low in, in uh, dairy. They used lots of oils and nuts, um, and were, it was a moderate um, degree of total fat, high in fiber, and high in polyunsaturated fat, fatty ice, acids. So in general, it's a very heart-healthy diet. Um, and what they found, importantly, was that the blood pressure in patients who had a lot of risk factors for heart disease was reduced by six to seven points in the systolic range and two to three points in the diastolic range. Um, and then when they looked at a younger and healthier group, they also adhering to a, med uh, a Mediterranean diet, they also lowered the blood pressure by two to three points. Um, but the strength of the evidence, the investigators thought, was relatively low just because it was based on only a couple of, of trials. Um, and they also found, unfortunately, in, this, in these three trials, that there was no consistent effect on LDL cholesterol. But they said that, in part, this was because of the differences and limitations of these studies. Importantly, right before this um, article came out last October, November, um, there is a group in Spain that published a very good randomized trial that's called the um, PREDIMED study that looked at over 4,000 people on the Mediterranean diet, randomized to either Mediterranean diet with virgin olive oil or Mediterranean diet with nuts or a regular diet, and found, in fact, that there was a reduction in cardiovascular events in those people who did take the Mediterranean diet that was supplemented. So um, even though these guidelines did come out, there are large trials now substantiating the true effects of the Mediterranean diet. So let's go to the DASH diet, which is the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension Diet. And this was two randomized trials, six publications. And in this, in this diet, it was interesting that patients were actually given their meals. They weren't allowed to eat anything else. They were actually handed the meals. And they found that in this high diet that's high in vegetables, similar to Mediterranean, but it was also very low in sweets and sugar-sweetened beverages and red meats, high in potassium, magnesium, 
magnesium and calcium, rich in protein and fiber. What happened to the blood pressure? So they took patients with blood pressures that started out at 120 to 160, over 80 to 95, so some normal, some abnormal, and um, they made sure that this was not a, it's not a diet to lose weight necessarily, um, and in this group, they made sure that the sodium and weights were stable, and they did find a five to six point decline in blood pressures. They also importantly found a lowering of LDL cholesterol by 11 points, um, and that was high evidence of data. And then when you look at the subpopulations, like did this was this effective in everyone, or are there certain subgroups that benefit more than others, they found it was equivalent. Men and women were the same, African American and non-African American were the same, older and younger were the same, hypertensive and non-hypertensive uh, adults all had benefits in, in both blood pressure and in lipid reduction. And the strength of evidence was very high. So the DASH diet is a diet that's on, online. You can look it up and give it to your patients. It's very effective, as you know now, with lowering both blood pressure and lipids. The glycemic index diets were looked at. There were three randomized trials, and those are diets like the South Beach diet, which really look at low glycemic index foods, um, and they were unable, unfortunately, to find a reduction in LDL cholesterol or in blood pressure. Importantly, that this is a group of patients who were not diabetic. In diabetics, we do know that the low glycemic index diets are beneficial. Now we're going to dietary fat and cholesterol. There were three big trials looking at saturated fat, trans fat, and dietary cholesterol and the effect on LDL cholesterol. Um, and if you look at the saturated fat, if you start a diet that's actually a 5 to 6% saturated fat um, compared to a usual diet where it's 14 to 15% saturated fat in most of our diets, you, if you do the satur low saturated fat, you can reduce your LDL from 11 to 13 points. It's very high evidence. And the trans fat, if you replace trans fat in your diet with other things like other carbohydrates or the polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, you can actually reduce triglycerides and um, LDL. Again, we've got to get rid of the donuts and replace it with other carbohydrates, and you can reduce both the LDL and you can have but no effect on the HDL. Now, this is important, and this was actually a challenge of, of the group, is that dietary cholesterol, when they actually looked at the studies looking at low cholesterol diets, they were unable to find evidence for improving LDL cholesterol. Now, that seems ironic. And what it was was that they included diets that were very, um, consisted of patients with very high cholesterols or familial hypertriglyceridemias. And so that's not the general public. So it's not that it's not good to recommend a low cholesterol diet. It's that, that the studies were not relevant right now. And I don't know if it's ethical right now to do a randomized control trial of patients who are at risk and give them a high cholesterol diet. So I don't know if we'll ever know that, that answer. So next we're going to talk about sodium. That's also big in the news, big in New York. What are we going to do about sodium? And in, in several studies, they looked at patients from ages 25 to 80 with blood pressures again, 120 to 160, and found that reducing sodium in, reduces blood pressure. Bottom line, okay? Very high evidence. And if you look at what the numbers are, most of us have an, a sodium of 3,300 3, per day on a general average American diet. If if you lower that to 2,400 a day, you can lower your blood pressure a few points. So that's the first recommendation. If you go even further, as the FDA has suggested, and lower your um, intake to 1,500 milligrams a day, you can lower your blood pressure by seven points systolic and three diastolic. So even in patients without hypertension, in eight, ages 30 to 80, with most of us in this room are, if you look at that, you can lower your, if you just lower your daily intake, whatever it is, if right now you're taking 2,000, you drop it by 1,000 milligrams per day, you can lower your blood pressure three to four points. Okay, so um, again, when they looked at all the subsets, um, all men, women, young, old, everyone had an important effect in improving blood pressure. When they looked at lowering sodium and looking at outcomes, looking at cardiovascular disease and heart failure, uh, unfortunately there was not enough of good studies to show um, a strong um, uh, evidence. We know that there are some small studies that showed if you decrease sodium, you could reduce heart disease events by 30%, but again, there was not enough data to make it a recommendation. When it comes to physical activity, in 2008 was a big recommendations, and since then, this group looked at another eight minutes 
analysis and five reviews. And um, what they found was that if you do improve aerobic physical activity compared to controls, you can reduce your LDL three to six points. And resistance training, this is very important. This is one of the newer recommendations. If you do resistance training at least three days a week and nine exercises with three sets, 11 repetitions, you can actually reduce the LDL cholesterol six to nine points. So in summary of the evidence-based guidelines, what's new in these guidelines compared to other guidelines was that it was a more in-depth systemic review. There were more emphasis on these dietary patterns. Um, and then there was evidence of who could, who could benefit from LDL reduction. So in summary, a heart-healthy diet, okay, a high in fruits and vegetables, low in red meats, um, was important in lowering both LDL cholesterol and blood pressure. And three examples are the DASH diet, the USDA diet, and the AHA diet. But in this study, the DASH diet was shown to reduce both blood pressure and cholesterol. Hint, that's on a test question coming up. Okay, um, next we look at um, uh, other uh, diet recommendations that, again, get your saturated fat down to 5%. Now, none of us, I mean, I don't go around looking at everything about well, how much saturated fat. So it turns out if you do eat, you get rid of the donuts and eat more fruits and vegetables and add the nuts to your diet, your, tran your saturated fat levels will go down to a good level. Um, Sodium, again, what I'm going to say is that we really want to aim for um, 2,400 for everybody. But if you have hypertension, if you get your sodium intake down to 1,500 milligrams a day, it's really hard to do that. You have to look at um, every food label. You will lower your blood pressure. And that's another question. Okay. Um, exercising at least three to four times a week aerobically, 40 minutes per session. And let's talk about our patient. So what happened to her? So. I have done some research on hypertension, and we have a food frequency questionnaire, which I had the patient fill out, and she, in fact, was intaking 3,500 milligrams of sodium a day. Some chips, some margaritas with salt. I mean, it was Chinese food. It added up. So she really had too much sodium. So I advised her to eliminate the high-sodium foods, avoid any food, any in one um, source of more than 400 milligrams of sodium per serving, no pickles, no chips, no hot dogs ever. She started an exercise program 40 minutes a week, four days 40 minutes, four days a week, and her follow-up blood pressure was 130 over 80. So a success story. She didn't have to start pills. So importantly, when we talk about how does lifestyle factors work, you have to have ready to change. So as nurses and nurse practitioners and technicians, you guys actually, I think, are better than physicians at actually assessing risk uh, at readiness for change. And this is a study that came out in, um, from some nurses, which were excellent in circulation, that showed that doctors usually are good at assessing risk behaviors and advising, but they're not good at negotiating with the patients, agreeing on a plan, assisting, and arranging for follow-up. So these are questions that we ask people when they're, when they're really ready to change their lifestyle. So in the future, you know, we have some holes in our lifestyle um, management guidelines. They haven't looked at explicitly on the role of calcium, magnesium, and exactly how much alcohol is good or bad for you. Um, they really need to look better at some multi-component lifestyle interventions. And again, what's, what we know is out there that we haven't really evaluated systemically is smartphone fitness apps, right? Half of you in this room probably have either motivators, workout guides, activity trackers, nutrition helpers, and sleep aids. And those are things that will be the future. Thank you very much. Okay, question number one. Which diet has been proven to lower blood pressure and cholesterol? Is it the Dean Ornish diet? A, B, the Weight Watchers? C, the South Beach? D, Dash? Or E, Atkins? Oh my gosh, you almost all got it right, 94%, exactly right, it's the DASH diet. Okay, go home and look it up, very good. All right, next, final question. A 56-year-old woman is diagnosed with hypertension. She currently consumes 3,200 milligrams of sodium per day. After curtailing her sodium to 2,400 milligrams per day, her blood pressure improves to 146 over 86. She prefers further lifestyle change instead of taking medications. What additional lifestyle change has been shown to improve blood pressure? A, add potassium. B, reduce the sodium intake further to 1,500 milligrams a day. C, start a low glycemic diet. Or D, supplement her diet with magnesium 200 milligrams. Let's see what you know. 92%, you've got it. And excellent. And that's, that's a wrap. All right, thank you very much. Bye.